All right, what's up, everybody? It is day 11 of Advent of Code 2021 in Rust, of course. <laughs> what else would we <laughs> be writing in, you know? I mean, that's the only thing that's cool to write. So here's this problem situation, 10 by 10 octopus grid as one tends to find. And basically what we need to do is each octopus over each sort of tick, you can imagine, gains one fluorescence level of energy i guess this is a common thing deep in the ocean i wasn't aware but that's fine as they grow higher eventually they will flash and what happens when they flash is that one will get reset back to zero and all of the ones around them will get one additional energy added to them and basically no matter how high above you go nine you always end up back at zero once you're done so you know if you flashed one spot you're always gonna you're not gonna do anything else special with that so there's some tricks that you can do inside here and pretty much the most of the thing that you want to do here is making sure that you're keeping track of what things have already flashed that will allow you to make sure you don't accidentally calculate too many things as well as not get wrong answers by going uh over top and sort of like overflowing or something so here's how the problem goes you get your input this is just that 10 by 10 with some numbers right and uh, you get the lines, just turn them all into digits, just like we like to do, and you get the numbers. Part 1 and Part 2 are basically the same. Part 1's just only 0 to 100, and this one's 0 to 10,000. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. So if you're writing code that is basically the same, then you just you just do that, okay? Uh, there's just some check that you do in this one, but it really doesn't. It's all the same, right? They just want you to write something else different so you don't overflow. Cool. So... How does this work? We're going to step over each level and we're going to accumulate these numbers because we're summing them up. That's what they're asking to do. But the main part of the problem, the main thing you're wondering is how do we get this to work? Well, we iterate over each of the rows and columns. We get whatever the value currently is. If that value is greater than or equal to 9, you could probably just write equals 9. But just in case you have some other mistakes in here, you can do this. You can say whether it's greater than or equal to 9, then we're going to insert this into our flashed map or set, basically. So we're just going to keep track, right, of each of the x, y coordinate pairs that we've already flashed during this time, okay? And then we basically just increment the number of wherever this state currently is, okay? So we're going to do all of that, and we do that in one pass first. I think so we always just do basically like 100 operations here. Don't start uh, doing a bunch of crazy stuff yet. You don't need to do that, okay? So this is part one. You iterate through all those and you're happy. Now, we use flash.clone here because what we want to do is we're only going to do special flashing for the first ones that flashed, okay? We don't want to do uh, sort of recursively here yet. We're going to keep track of the flashes that we've already done. So we iterate over each of these x, y pairs, right? So these are each one that's greater than or equal to 9 that we've encountered so far, so that we encounter right at this state, right? We insert them inside here. And then we're going to keep on iterating through those and see if we need to do additional flashing because it does cascade. The reason that we have to do this clone is so that we can pass this mutable reference of flashed inside here so that we can keep on adding any new fields that get flashed as we go, Okay. So what does flash actually look like? What is this code? So we're going to do very similar stuff. This is just, we're basically doing that Cartesian product here where we're going, you know, above, above to the right, above, you know, to the right, down to the right, down. You guys know how that, how that all goes out and just skipping the one in the center. We just do some bounds checking to make sure we don't do anything bad, like going past the edge of our arrays. We check, this is very important, very important. You need to check if you've already flashed this spot before in this iteration, okay? If you did, then you get to skip this one and you don't have to worry if, if uh, it would sort of like cascade more. That will cause you to get the wrong answer and to do a bunch more work because you can sort of uh, end up with the situation where you're doing a lot of work that you don't actually need to do anymore. So you can skip this one if you already contained it. Now we do the same incrementing of our X, Y pair, okay? And then we check, okay, now are we greater than nine? Now we do this flash again. And notice we're passing through this flash the whole way to make sure that we don't actually call this code too many times, okay? So then we do flash. We do this for each of the ones that did flash during our initial pass, right? Because right, think about we collect each one as we go, then we just do it for the X, Y pairs. And then once we're all the way done, note that this flash gets cloned, so this is just basically a copy so we can iterate over them. This flash is the one that has been uh, updated with each spot that's been flashed as we go along. We have to reset those back to zero 
once we're completed, right? Because it doesn't matter if it's been flashed, was at nine and it got flashed to 10, 11, 12. Doesn't matter. That uh, doesn't matter to this equation. They always go back to zero once they've been flashed. So you put them back to zero and then you can return the length, which is how many have been flashed in this iteration. Uh, and then you're just going to do that basically over and over and over and over until you have completed each of the or however many rounds are associated with the problem that you have. So with that being said, that's basically the whole problem. Part two is basically just exactly the same, except you're asking, hey, um, when did we have 100 of these? OK, so that's it. Uh, nothing, nothing too crazy going on in this problem. Main thing, right, is this use of sets to make sure that we have efficient lookup and efficient insertion into these so that we're not taking too long to check if we've already flashed this one before. Okay. This is really common in these sort of X, Y problems that you're going to need to store some tuple since that's is able to be easily hashed. And you just throw that into some set and you can look it up to check for if you've already done that work before to make sure that you don't accidentally end up in some sort of loop where you're going around and around and around. With that, that's day 11. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any comments or anything you'd like me to go over, let me know in the comments any parts of future Rust episodes that you'd like me explain different things. Totally do that. Otherwise, I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everybody.